element, you'll you'll hear immediately when it begins because it's done. It's, it's kind of infectious. It just starts rolling, and I hope it doesn't run roll over me because it, I really did have to practice. And not make it I need a page to Bless, bless his heart. Where is he going? There you are. <laughs> Ian. All right, now, you're going to stand right over there. And this is still in manuscript because we haven't had the time to get it set on a computer. And, you know, I'm a dinosaur. I still write with a pencil. You know, I usually have a big eraser on top of that pencil. That's the most important element, the eraser. Okay? And uh, there's a crucial page turn situation here, and he knows what he's doing, and uh, I'm going to try to pretend that I do. Ready now? I guess we are.
that's Alleluia. What does the word Alleluia mean? Do you know? Patrick? Uh, praise. Praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Okay. Now we're talking supposedly about hymns and spiritual songs. Okay, and so that's what I'm going to do. Hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. And the next thing I'd like to play for you is a couple of selections from a book uh, that's published by Concordia, Hear What God Will Speak. And it's six meditations, or five or six meditations on verses from the Psalms, and I'd like to do two of them uh, together. The first is a very short meditation uh, on the eighth verse of Psalm 85. I will hear what God will speak. And then the next is Psalm 141, the second verse. Let my prayer be set forth before thee by incense. Now, in the second piece, I use a Middle Eastern scale. And of course, this evokes, evokes the, the incense, which is part of the tradition of the Middle East. So it's, I will hear what God will speak, and then let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense.
is a beautiful cover. Sometimes they really do get it right. <laughs> This is also a beautiful cover. I don't have anything to do with the cover, so I'm giving the artist credit. I don't know who the artist was. But don't you think she or he did a nice job on that one? Now, this is one of my latest compositions, and I wrote it last year, and it, it takes about a year for things to get in print these days. And I, I dedicated this piece to my dear friend and colleague, Lloyd Matthew, and he's a Bermudian head of the Bermuda School of Music. I had the privilege of teaching there fall semester last year. And first of all, Bermuda is a beautiful place to be. And secondly, this is a beautiful school because in the whole island, they only have 67,000 people. And this school has about 1,000 music students. That's a very high percentage if you consider the whole island, you know. And they range in age from about seven to the 70s adults and children, and of course there are some beginners and, and some very advanced pupils too. But he, he is the director of the school, and, and he has a great love of spirituals. And he also, if you ever get to Bermuda, he plays and directs at the Methodist Church, Wesley Methodist, which is the big uh, Methodist church right downtown. So I'm going to do as much as we can until this. We go till 3.30. Is that all right with you if we do the spiritual suite? It, it has six movements. So uh, I'll just tell you what the movements are. But you probably know these tunes. Uh, he is King of Kings. He's got the whole world in his hands. I've got peace like a river. Let us break bread together. Lord, I want to be a Christian. And steal away to Jesus. But that's not the order I'm going to play today. OK? I'll start with steal away to Jesus. And we'll stop after, after a couple of these, and I, I want to have your reactions on the registration. Now, bear in mind that if I had had more time, I would develop the registrations in more detail. And so I, I wish I had more time because I really, really like this organ. Okay. Now, this first piece I don't need to.
notice anything on that very last chord? Would you mind listening to it again? Just the last chord? And really listen. I'll play the last measure. Okay, now what did I do at the very end there? I opened the swell pedals very suddenly just before I took the hands off the keys. Okay, now what did that do? You didn't expect it, first of all. Well, yeah, what else did it do? It gives you a little bit more heightened sense of the chord before you just cut it off. And again, these are tricks I'm telling you about. 
We need tricks like this in dry acoustics particularly, okay? Now, there's also the acoustic release that we talked about yesterday, remember about that? And then we have this attack release of big chords at the end, and then you can do this little business with the swell pedal. So those are maybe some tricks that you would know about. Okay. And I borrowed that from a theater organist. I, I admire some theater organists so very much. I really wish I could play like they do, but I just don't have that gift. But they, they play so musically and, and with a, such a sense of phrase. So. Let us break bread together. Now this next piece is a transcription. It was originally written for piano and organ, and I called it spiritual. And uh, how many have ever played piano and organ duets? Have you played that one? Of all the piano and organ duets I've written, that's my fa favorite. And, uh, but as I have said before, if you get a good tune, you're halfway there. So, so I transcribe it for organ solo, and here it is.
last one is, I've got peace like a river. and I've played many of them in Germany, but it's not my band. So, uh, but I think some of you would be that. Uh, maybe, you know. I'd like to ask you if you have any thoughts about any of the pieces that I've played or, or any of the registrations or, or the style of, of playing or whatever. Maybe I've played too much. Uh, I'm just very curious of what, if you can remember, or if you have written down, what did you 
choose for the very final, last little melodic gesture at the end of Let Us Break Bread Together. Let's see if I, if I can recreate it. Oh, I think I know what it was. This is the very end of Let Us Break Bread Together. process to go to a series of different instruments and get these samples, but his sampling rate is very high, and he has recently developed this stuff. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. This is a real skin hop. And, and for many years he was using a different sample because this, this skin hop had so many overtones and took up so much memory, but now with the added technology of the new systems, he was able to finally do the skin of hop. So that is a real skin of hop. And actually, the tram affects that hop too. You can use it with the tram. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Here it is without the tremulant. Here it is with tremulant. It's that little shimmer. It's a very subtle effect, but I think it's really, you know, it's kind of like uh, the icing on Was the organ piano you talked about? Was it? He's got the whole world in his hand. It's called spiritual. Just called spiritual. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, that is the tune. Okay. And uh, the the actual tune doesn't come in at the very beginning, so it's a little bit intentionally deceptive. And I, I hide that tune. But, you know, you don't have to hit them over the head with the tune at the very beginning. You can flip it in. And well, that's about all that I prepared, unless you have any questions or if you'd like me to do something else. I do have another question, and it's again, it's about the registration, Good. Uh, which uh, on your final piece, mm -hmm. Peace Like a River, it sounded, especially toward the end, that I mean, I think we could hear your love of theater organ, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, mm -hmm. but you know, I could hear your love for it. Is that something you would play in a church setting? Absolutely. Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, I, mean, I guess I'm real conservative. <laughs> that's okay. I, I think not every organ could handle that. Yeah. You know, have, in other that. words, if you have a very strict Baroque type organ, it would sound probably a little on the ridiculous side. You know, on, the, on a certain instrument, you have to gear towards what that instrument was designed to do within a certain parameter. But uh, I, I think more and more people are becoming open-minded about tonalities. And, and you know, if you, for example, we're living in the 21st century now, and, and Maurice Ravel died in 1937. Hmm. Well, if you look at one of Maurice Ravel's orchestrations, like Bolero or any of those pieces of his, he has saxophones in the orchestra 
and he, he uses tricks that are unbelievable, you know, with percussion and, and, and if, you, if you study the bolero, for example, at one point in, in the score, he, he uses what we organists know as the cornet. He, he, you know about this, you guys? He, he, he arranges his orchestration so he has all these overtones that we, we get by drawing different mutation sounds, like the two and two thirds and one and three fifths that I was talking about yesterday. Now, in, in the next session, I'm going to be a little bit more towards the classical, if, if you will, okay? Because, of course, I feel the spirituals lend themselves to, to a broader treatment, and, uh, and I'm very sympathetic with that. But, of course, there's so much literature for the organ, we can't neglect the classical either. So it's nice to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. As I say, you don't have to knock them over the head every Sunday with the Bach behind the mass. <laughs> no. It would be nice to have it once in a while, maybe, but not every Sunday. And, uh, I remember one of my teachers once, he was the organist at the church where the great preacher Peter Marshall was the New York Avenue Presbyterian Church. This is about 60 years ago. And for the Vesper service, he did the complete Gothic symphony of Chamarie Vitor. And at the offertory, he played Jesu Bambino on the chimes. And Peter Marshall came up to him after the service and said, Bill, those chimes are so beautiful. That's it. Yeah. You know, they have different things speak to different people. You hit the nail on the head. You know, and, and if you're going to minister through music, I think you have to be aware of that. And, and the last thing in the world I want to do to, is to tell you that I've got all the answers. I don't. Right? But I'm, I'm exploring different paths all the time. And I'm exploring new hymnody and, and, and different ways of presenting it on the organ. And I think in playing the organ in the church setting, you, all, you almost have to do this because you have a duty to, to minister through music to the people. It's not like you're running a musicology class, after all. So, although there are some organists who think that way. Well, you've been awfully kind. Do you want to hear the hallelujah one more time? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Frank, I have one more question. You mentioned the Middle Eastern scale. Yeah. What do you think about Middle All kinds of different Middle Eastern scales. You know about major minor scales. And then we have the modes. Of course, we can have the major modes and the minor modes. So this is a mixture, and it is an augmented interval here. I will see. I'll play it for you. This is the orchestral oboe in the solo division. First of all, anyone from Boston can't pronounce anything right. right. Secondly, I can't remember the name of that particular like a, um, movie. But he has that hot Any more questions? Right, we're we're going to try to do this. I see you again at what time? Next Four o'clock. Four o'clock, good.